every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we are back here at Weiss High School here in Pflugerville, and pretty good first quarter. Um, I'll tell you what, though, we didn't have to play against Jackson the first time, and he is a beast inside. We're just waiting for the two teams to come out. Something that's really working for us is, is Lockhart's typical feistiness. We kind of get un under the, the skin of the other team and just get going, and this is working for us right now. It really is, and I think the one mistake they made early on was when they threw the, the elbow to the nose of Gio Roque because you just woke up the sleeping bear. For sure. He, he was feeling his nose the whole quarter, too, so <laughs> he didn't forget about it. So Mascoy will be throwing it in for the Wolves. He'll give it up to Pinson, and here we go to start the second quarter. The Lions up 10-8, first time in 20 years they've seen the playoffs. Ball is stripped by ja, uh, ja Goley. Major New gets the steal. Back to Ja Goley. In the corner to Stevenson. Over to Goley. Now they're in man-to-man. -man. They're just mixing it up on us, trying to make us think a little bit. Goalie and Pinson going head to head. Goalie traveled, oh, he got away with the travel. <laughs> but he scores instead. He sure did. Wow, and a technical foul? Oh, they said delay a game. I thought they called a technical foul. Ja Goalie took about, I don't know, six, seven steps, ended up scoring, we'll take it. Pinson will walk it up the floor. One, two, I think this is a one, two, two. Nope, it's a two, three. So the zone is where they're gonna stay as the Lions, and this is a pretty good outside shooting team. Mason from the corner from three, and he hits it. He now has six. Both of, okay, kicks it out to Ja Goley. Ja Goley's gonna drive the lane up and under, and he scores. That was nice. And earlier when I said that Gio was quick, physically he is quick, but I was really meaning mentally. And, and to think of something like that just at the end. And then Major just took an inbounds pass and banks it in off a, a weird angle. The Lions are up three now. The big guys are doing a great job for the Lions tonight. They really are. Pins and drives, he gets fouled. And they're gonna call that on Jaw Goalie. That is Jaw's first, team sixth. They'll be in the bonus for the last minute and 20 from here on out. Pinson will go to the line to shoot from the free throw line. He has not scored yet tonight. So we suggested that this might be a good thing for the Lions, but we didn't think about it the other way. We exactly. need to definitely be careful with our fouls. 20 to 18 as he makes the first free throw. Wybrew will sit down. Dyke is gonna check in for the Wolves. Free throws no good, rebounded by Major New. 115 to go, goalie with the ball. Gives it to Major, Major from the free throw line, can't get it to go, Mason gets a rebound. A minute five to go, first half, 20 to 18, Lions on top. Again, first time in 20 years they've been in the playoffs and they're playing well right now. The team today, Merle Bertrand, our QA, Carson Smith running the produce, production of the, the show here. Carrie Smith, color commentating myself, Scott Smith doing the play-by-play. -play. We're down to 45 seconds. Tay Andrews just about got a steal on Mason. They go inside to Jackson. He walked again and got away with it, and he'll score the bucket. He now has eight. 20 to 20 with 34 seconds left. Goalie. Goalie going against Dyke. Goalie drives, gets fouled, and that's gonna be on Dyke, and he didn't like it. First foul, team six. Both teams will be in the bonus, not that it matters with 22 seconds left. Goalie goes to the line where he got technical fouls early on. 
I don't know if it was a scorebook thing, which we think it was, or if somebody was dunking before the game or what, but they got technical fouls to start the game. Jaw Gulley hit one of two of those. He hits this one, giving us a 21 to 20 lead with 22 seconds left. Jordan Garcia has checked in. Miguel is sitting down now. And he misses the second one, and they're gonna get Roque with his second foul. Oh, check that, that's his first foul, sorry. So they'll get a one and one out of this. The good thing is, is Jackson for them, we're wearing him out. He's tired. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He's getting Poor beat thing. up by Gio. He's getting <laughs> beat up by Major. He's getting beat up by Tyler. They're putting him through the ringer. Yes, he's he's definitely have to work for it today. So it'll be Wybru, the one guy we don't want to foul, at the free throw line to shoot a one on one. Unfortunately, I gave him that, that kiss of death because he missed the free throw. 18 seconds left. Garcia with the ball. And they're going to call Massaquay with the reach away from the basketball. That's wow. his second foul. Team seventh. And now Ja Goli, who's usually really good at the free throw lines, two for four today. He'll go to the line for one on one. And he makes it. You definitely don't want to be foul on jaw very often. 22 to 20. Second free throw, rims off. He didn't keep his feet set and missed it. Mason has it with 10 seconds left. Do not let him shoot a shot late in the half. He's gonna drive and they're gonna call a foul. I didn't see who the foul was on though. Zero, Tay Andrews. That's his first, team eight. So it will be Mason going to the line to shoot a one on one. He has six points, both off of three pointers. Wybrew will check out. Dig or Dyke will check in. And he'll make the first one. He now has seven. 22-21, 3.6 seconds to go here in the first half. And he makes them both. He now has eight. Tied at 22 and they call a foul on Massaquai. That will be his third foul and he is not at all happy about that. No, that's his third in what, a minute? <laughs> <laughs> He's been fouling a lot and they're gonna go to the bench to bring Diggs in for Massaquai. So going to the line will be Tay Andrews. And he misses. And the rebound is gotten by Diggs. And that is how the first half will end. We started the game at zero to zero. We go to half, 22 to 22. We'll go ahead and take it to a quick commercial break. And when we come back at halftime, we're gonna be talking to Lockhart quarterback Senior Jackie Edwards Jr. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network fueled by Vibe Live. For over 15 years, rain and drywall and paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with rain and drywall and paint today. Come on in to Texas Oil Express, where we can change your oil in under 10 minutes. We also do inspection stickers. Be sure to shop Lockhart first and check us out on Facebook. Voted Caldwell County's best oil change in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2013, 2018, and 2019. Link Realty proudly supports Lockhart Lions Athletics. For all of your real estate needs, come see Link Realty on the square in Lockhart or visit them online at linkrealtytx.com. 
Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Weiss High School in Pflugerville where the Lions, first time in 20 years, they make the playoffs and they're doing well. 22-22 at the half against the, the Weiss Wolves who are the number two seed that came out of District 18. Now, I've got a young man with me who I've been watching play basketball since he was a sophomore, at least a sophomore, might have been even his freshman year, but seems like he's been on the varsity forever where he's from, so I'm gonna let him tell you who he is and what school that he plays for, but by God, we've seen him a lot over the years. Who are you? Hey, uh, thanks for having me. I'm Rob Wade and I go to McCallum High School. Um, we played Lockhart my freshman year when I was on the freshman team, and then I've played against them three years in a row since my sophomore year. And I think it's, it's been a pretty even series. I think I'm on varsity, I'm four and two or something. But the last two years we've split, so it's always good playing against Lockhart. And uh, yeah, it's, they got a good team this year. So um, tell, tell us a little bit about what you guys do, because again, you're one of my favorites in the district. Yes, sir. Now, that's got to be your brother, am I correct, that plays with you? Yeah, number three is my twin brother, John. So uh, now, we look nothing alike right, over twins. It's, okay, so is it like a competition where who can beat up who at home, or do you guys get along? So <laughs> we get along, but like it was it was competition when we were younger, but I kind of like separated myself because I got a lot more serious about basketball probably freshman year of high school. And I think John's John gets better grades, and he's a little smarter than me, so we kind of each have <laughs> our own little things. So that's well, fun. I know that during one of the games, and it was during one of my sons, I want to say it was his junior or senior year, we had an altercation. And yeah. you and your brother were out there trying to ease yeah. everybody. And, and then I know you all got together and started talking. That is when I thought, I like this kid. I like his brother. I like these guys. They're nice people. Sure. But uh, that, made, that, made, that right there said a lot about you and your brother and well, your thanks. family. Thank you. So, you know, been a big fan, but I want you to tell everybody about you guys just played Maynard and what happened in that game. Um, so we played Maynard and they were they were favored in the Statesman, which is the Austin newsletter and a bunch of, you know, high school account, like high school sports accounts on Twitter had Maynard and we're the two seed, they're the three seed. So everybody was saying Maynard's gonna win and we came in, we had our game plan. Um, we just played really well. It was. You know, both teams were kind of jittery at the, at the start. I think, like, this game is about the same score at half. And then second half, I think our experience, we have seven seniors on the team, and we were just like, all right, we got this, and we got together. We ended up winning by 17. It was a good controlled win at the end. So how many did you have? I ended up with 15. What, you didn't score 30? No, I did not score 30. How about a dunk? I did have a dunk. There I had an and one dunk. All right, there you go. There you go. That's good. Well, we're hoping that maybe in the third round we might meet each other again yeah. for another big game because usually when the two teams yeah. get together, it's an it's just a it's great huge, basketball yeah. game to watch. Yeah, it'll be the so, tiebreaker. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, I, you know, I know you guys have got to get going and doing your thing, but I wanted, because you're one of my favorite players in the district that doesn't play in Lockhart, I wanted to get you on here, let yes, you sir. talk a little bit about yourself, and then, you know, whether or not you and your brother fought at home, because <laughs> we always talk about that on the yeah. air. Who wins the dinner table? <laughs> Who wins when they're shooting baskets? Who wins when they're sitting there picking scores? You know, yeah. we figured it had to be pretty competitive at the house. For so, sure, yeah. But when you get home, tell your parents they do a fantastic job. We love you and your brother. You're great people. And sure. glad to have you on board with us tonight. Thank you. All right, well, good All luck right. to you. Thank good you. Good luck to you all, too. Thank you. All right, so we're going to switch gears again. This young man had, had, had played against Lockhart for so many years. He's been a pain in our side for a very long time. Glad to get him on here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and talk to our superstar. So let him get the headset on here pretty quick. All right, so, what I remember of this kid, I've been calling sports at Lockhart for five years. He was a sophomore, and our quarterback, who we kind of were living and dying with that year, got hurt 
this guy took over as a sophomore, and I thought, oh, good God, is this sophomore going to be able to handle this pressure? Came in, knocked it out of the park the entire season, and has been starting ever since. So we're here with Jackie Edwards Jr., which I'm glad he's a senior now because it was hard to say Jackie Edwards Jr., the junior, when he was a junior. So that <laughs> just kinda, it was kind of a, a pain. So I'm glad he's a senior this year. So Jackie, you had a, a rough year with injuries in football, but that because of what you did prior to this year, it got you a scholarship somewhere. Where are you heading to play football next year? I'm heading my talents to go play at Texas Western University in Fort Worth. That's what I figured, but I wanted you to break the news to everybody. And Jackie, the thing is, what people probably don't know about you unless they go to all the games, you were a starting quarterback and one of the mainstays. As a matter of fact, you were the preseason offensive player of the year voted by all the coaches yes, sir. for our football district. Okay, well, yeah, he's a good football player, but then he's a good basketball player. He can drop threes, he played great defense, just a heck of an athlete there, but you could have probably gone somewhere playing baseball. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Are you playing this year? Yes, sir. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to say, okay, I got my scholarship. Now I'm done. I'm just going to focus on football or if you were going to go ahead and play baseball. Yes, sir. I'm playing baseball. Very good. So will you be in the outfield again this year? Yes, sir. Outfield. And hopefully they'll let me pitch some. There you go. There you go. Well, and you know, I was talking to the folks down here that are once with the Statesman and the other one's like uh, Alamo Sports or whatever for hoops. Yes, sir. And they looked at Gio Roki and thought, oh, he has to be some kind of a football star. Yeah. And I said, he don't even play football. Yes, sir. You know, kind of thing. So for you, when you go to play college football, are they looking at you as a quarterback, a defensive guy? What are they looking at? Uh, yes, sir. They're looking at me as a quarterback. Very good. So as far as your football career, what was probably the biggest highlight in your, your, or your football career? Uh, I feel like the biggest highlight of my football career as a Lockhart Lion was really just getting my first start against Medina Valley my sophomore year. I remember you talking to me before that game, too. <laughs> well, you know, I was it was just one of those things you knew that if anything happened, you'd be stepping in. And I was real worried about a sophomore coming in. I, I just want you to know, I think what you did your sophomore, junior, senior year, even your senior year with the injuries, was phenomenal. I mean, above, thank you, thank you. we're talking about the kind of numbers that like Daquan Ellison would put up. You were doing that as a runner and a thrower, and then just keeping the, the team under under keel. You kept them at ease. You didn't let them get all wound up and stuff. And I, I tell you what, I'm gonna miss calling your games. It was a pleasure thank watching you, you play. You. Anybody you wanna give a shout out to tonight? I uh, just shout out to all the fans and my parents and God, because without them, Lockhart wouldn't be here today in this playoff game. I know we wanted to make the community proud, so yes, sir. Well, I'm glad you're here, and I'm going to get back to calling the game. Thank you very much, sir, hey, and good luck you. to you in college. Thank you. We're proud of you, Jackie. Really proud of you. All right, so that was Jackie Edwards Jr., and this year he's the senior. So real quickly, I'm going to let Carrie talk about her highlights and get people caught up to speed here. Not my highlights, just the highlights of the game. Just in case you were in and out with our uh, Wi-Fi issues, we just wanted to, you know, kind of go back a little bit. Like Scott said, we're starting over for the second half, 22-22. It's been a, an active game, right? Um, I think both sides are pretty feisty, which goes well with our alliance because we are very feisty. So if we can feed off of that from another team, we will. Um, and that's what we've been doing. So it's really gone back and forth and starting the second half 22 to 22 is a great thing for us okay so we're back the only difference in the starting lineups is it looks like Diggs is going to start for Massaquoi who had 3,000 in the first half everybody else is starting the second half that started the first half Roque will throw it into Miguel Miguel will hand it off to Bully, and here we go, starting the third quarter, tied at 22. Miguel hasn't even shot the ball tonight. Roque with the hook shot, he scores. That's the way to start the second half. Roque now with eight. Just giving you a heads up, it costs some pretty good money to put video onto games like this. This is why this game is audio only, just like a radio broadcast. And uh, you're, we're, you're listening to a very good game. Mason with the ball going up against the man-to-man -man of Lockhart. I'm kind of surprised they're in it. Nope, they've been going back to his zone. 
They did a good job, as does Miguel, to keep uh, Diggs out of the lane. Mason going to go up against Tay. They double team him. Maybrew from the three point line misses. Jackson somehow gets a foul, doesn't get called on him. Diggs misses the shot. Stevenson gets the rebound. Ja Gulley with it on the right side. Spin move, fade away, and he hits it. And he hits it with three people on him. Yes, he did, and he's half their size. Nine points. Lions are up 26-22 with 6.42 to go, third quarter. First time in the state playoffs in 20 years. I was still skinny back when they went to the playoffs the last mm -hmm. time. Diggs to Pinson. Now they're against that 2-3 zone. Nope, they're actually man-to-man. -man. They're disguising it well. Pinson into Maybrew. Maybrew scores the layup. He now has four. 26-24, Gully will walk it up. In the first half, Massacoy had three, Pinson one, Mason eight, Wybrew two, and Jackson eight. For the Wolves, Stevenson tries to throw it in a Roque, and Maybrew gets the steal. Hands it off to Pinson. Diggs. Now they'll give it to Mason. Mason against Andrews. He'll float it, no good. Jackson, easy rebound, easy layup. He'll score his 10th point. Stevenson will pick up his third foul. That is costly early on. Oh, actually they called that on Tay Andrews, I think. They did call that on Andrews, and he'll score it. So how many is that for Tay? Tay has two, Stevenson has two. And he hit the free throw, so that will put them up 27, 26. Goalie with the ball, driving the lane, lays it up and scores. Goalie with 11, 28-27 Lions, Pinson with the ball. We may, we may not get this all done in four quarters. Pinson up top. Honestly, you can't ask for much more out of a playoff game. Well, this is a really nice game to watch. They'll get it over to Mason in the corner, no good. Goalie comes down with it. Major News getting ready to check in at the next dead ball. Goalie on the right side. From way downtown, no good. Stevenson Jackson fighting for the ball. Jackson the last to touch it. Stevenson will get it. <coughs> Major New will check in, and I believe they're going to take Miguel out. Massaquay will check in with three fouls, and Diggs will check out. 28-27, your lines are on top with the ball. Tay Andrews from the corner, way short on the three-pointer. Jackson gets the rebound, kicks it out to Pinson, and here he goes the other way. The speed is picked up in this game a little bit. Three-pointer by Mason is good in the corner. Timeout is called by the Lions. You're right, and, and having the speed faster right now is kind of going to get us because what was benefiting us is holding that ball over there on the offensive side. Even if we didn't score, we're at least taking that time away from it. Well, and, you know, with 4.44 to go here in the third quarter, we're going to leave it here to catch up on the first half scoring for the Lions. 30-28, to 28, Mason has hit three three-pointers. He now has 11 points. For the Lions at half, it was uh, goalie with seven, Garcia with two, Major New with six, Roque with six, and Stevenson with one. But in this quarter, goalie has hit two buckets, so he now has 11, and Roque has eight. On the flip side, Mason has 11, and Wybrew has four, and 11 for Jackson. So 4.44 to go here in the third quarter. Major news on the floor with uh, Miguel, and Tay Andrews, Ja Goalie, and Gio Roque. Roque throws it in the goalie. <coughs> They get the ball in the corner to Miguel. Roque gonna drive the lane. Puts it up, gets blocked by Jackson. And here they go the other way is Mason. And a three pointer by Mason and now things are starting to get a little ugly here. The Lions are gonna have to keep an eye on him. And they're gonna call a travel on goalie. Goalie does not like the call. 33 to 28, 
4.13 to go, third quarter. The wheels have kind of fallen off here. The Lions need to pick it up. We definitely have a bigger crowd than Weiss does as they're all sitting right behind us. Ball goes out of bounds off Pinson. Oh, they said it went out of bounds on Miguel. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure how they saw that. He was on the floor. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Pinson will throw it in with just under four minutes. Throws it in cross court to Massacoy. He's gonna drive on Miguel. Pulls up, shoots a jumper, and he scores. He now has five. 35-28, the Lions are in a shooting slump here. And the Wolves have gotten hot. Nothing to panic about. No, the big ticket is to stay calm. Goalie has it on the right side. Drive, gets tripped, and they're not gonna call anything. Pinson comes up with it. And he misses the layup. Major news there for the rebound, and here come the Lions. Tay Andrews. I think the Lions need to slow it down. They're trying to get in a foot race with a team that wants to be in a foot race. Slow it down, pound it inside, make them work on you. Roque to Goli. He's wanting a screen, does Goli. He's going to get double teamed. There's a foul on Mason. Oh, wow, they called five seconds. There is no way that was not a foul. And was he not moving? Yeah, you can't have a five seconds when you're moving alongside him, but the fact that he was bodying him up the whole way, a timeout is called. We're gonna go ahead and take a real quick break. Why don't you go ahead and read the, the people that don't have commercials. All right, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Westies, State Farm, Diesel Dogs, Snap Fitness, The Pearl, and Ronda Reagan Realty. All right, having to get caught up with some drinking of fluids here. So the score was tied 22 to 22 at the half. Right now it is 13 to six in favor of Weiss here in the third quarter. The Lions are gonna have to get some stops, but more importantly, they've gotta go back inside and go where they got their buckets early on. It's not that they're shooting a bunch of three pointers, but they're not looking inside right now. Wybrew will throw it in for the Wolves. Hands it off to Pinson. 2.50 to go, third quarter. The Wolves have the ball in the lead. Mason up top to Massaquai. Back to Mason. Three pointers on the way, and he buries it. He has hit three three pointers in this quarter alone, five for the game. He has 17 points, and the Lions are down 10. Miguel gives it to Garcia. Back to Goalie. Goalie drives, kicks it over to Tay. Tay's gonna drive, puts it up, no good. And Jackson with the rebound, throws it long to Massacoy. He'll lay it up and miss the layup. Jordan Garcia gets it. And I think the Lions have just got to slow down. Yes. They're trying to play too fast. It's kind of what we said at the beginning of the game, though, that their their little guys are quick, so they're ready to run. Roque to Jordan Garcia. A minute 48 to go. The Lions down 10. They're back in a 2-3 zone, but they are trapping out of this 2-3 zone. And they're going to finally call the foul that should have been called earlier on Mason. His second, team first. Each team with one foul. Silvestre will check in for Garcia. Stevenson for Roque. Andrews will throw it into goalie. Andrews up to New. New to Silvestre. Into Stevenson. And Stevenson throws it away and Mason comes out with a steal. He'll hand it off to Pinson. We have a minute 20 to go third quarter, 38-28. Nothing really rolling the way of the Lions here in the second half. 
Mason thought about the three. He's going to drive the lane, throws up the floater, and it's no good. Rebounded by Jackson, and he's going to get – no, he's going to walk. I can't wait to see that kid when he turns into a junior or a senior. Good gosh, he's big. <laughs> We're right at a minute to go here in the third quarter. Lions down 10, but they have the ball. Going to Silvestre, inside to Stevenson. Out to Silvestre. He throws it inside to New. New will kick it out. Silvestre to New, the hook shot, no good. And Stevenson will get called for the foul. That is his third. Team second. I don't, I don't think so. Oh, wow, really? Mm -mm. They called that on Pinson? Yep. First foul on Pinson, team second. So that is the second time I thought Tyler fouled and he didn't get called for it. New with it at the top of the key over to Silvestre. 40 seconds to go, third quarter, down 10. Goalie on the right wing. He'll bring it back out to reset the lineup. They'll give it to Silvestre. Silvestre inside to New. New's going to go up, gets blocked by Jackson. Here comes Mason the other way. Pinson from three. He misses. And it's rebounded by, oh, Major diving for it. Then it's stolen by Massaquai. Inside to Jackson. He gets fouled and misses the layup. This time, Stevenson got the foul. So it'll be Jackson going to the line where he's one for one today. Thirty-eight, twenty-eight. It has been sixteen to six in favor of the Wolves here in the third quarter, and he misses the free throw. Coach Torres over there getting a little worked up. Yeah, I saw Mac trying to pull him back. Mm -hmm. And his second free throw falls in. An 11 point lead. 39 28 with eight seconds left. Wybrew will, no, check that. Jackson will check out. Diggs will check in, as does Dyke. Massacoy gets out as well. Goalie has the ball with six seconds left. Goalie drives, shoots, and scores right at the buzzer. So just like that, John Goalie drops them within nine, and that's exactly what they needed to finish the quarter. So after three quarters of play, it's the Weiss uh, Wolves 39, your Lockhart Lions 30. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. All right, we are back, and I'm just trying to make sure I got all my scores right, which we do. So it looks like Massaquoi now has five. Pinson one, 17 for Mason, five of those on three pointers. Four points for Wybrew and 12 for Jackson, the big man inside. On the other side, it is uh, Ja Gulley with 13, two for Jordan Garcia, six for Major New, eight for Gio Roque, and one for Tyler Stevenson. And that is that for them. And trying to make sure I get all the points totaled up. As we are getting ready to start the fourth and final quarter here. And this is definitely not the end all. They just need to go in there, focus like they can. We know they can. This is nothing compared to some of the, the comebacks that they've had this Exa year. Exactly. I mean, we've seen the, both the boys and girls come from way behind to Absolutely. win basketball games. They just need to calm down, keep their wits about them. And stop that gentleman right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> So Mason throws it into Pinson, and here we go. As the Wolves want to run, run, get the score moving, they want to play the game fast. Pinson goes down, and they're going to stop the game as Pinson went down. <laughs> I 
our fans aren't happy that they're basically getting a mini timeout here because somebody slipped, which is not a normal thing. They didn't even come clean the floor. No, they didn't. Pinson will throw it into Mason. Mason's gonna drive. Gets the shot up, no good. Rebound by Tay Andrews. And that's what we need. We need them to miss shots and we need to finish at the other end. And that, that miss shot was thanks to Gio Roque, for sure. That big hand in your face will keep you from shooting it. Good rotation by Roque. They're double teaming goalie. Goalie throws it away. Pinson with the steal, lays it up, scores, and somehow they call a foul on goalie. He did not even touch him. Wow. He was ready. To, I think he swallowed his whistle. Man. So Ja Goley will pick up his second foul. That's a team third. <laughs> and he'll make the free throw. Now they got one of the mama bears mad up there. They better watch out. 42 to 30. Now what, what's going on? I have no idea. Oh. Oh, he's talking to the two guards. We're having a meeting about how to behave. Yes, Pinson mm -hmm. and Goley. Because we can't talk in basketball? Well, these two guys are notorious stuff talkers. So this is not surprising at all. <laughs> you know, and you said at the beginning of the game that the, the referees seemed like they were letting them play. They need to let them play. Let them talk a little bit. So Goley will have it against Massaquai. Shot is thrown up, no good. And here comes Pence in the other way. The Lions have got to get something answered real quick. They don't want to be falling any further behind. Pinson from three and he hits it and that is not what we needed. No. 45 to 30, it's now a 15 point game. The Lions have only scored eight points in the second half. They're taking goalie out of the game and forcing us to go inside and honestly, that's what we should be doing. Goalie will shoot and score. And a timeout is called. You're right, and, and we know we can score inside. Those games that we focused on the inside, those are the ones that we did really, really well on. Not taking jaw out of it, but just focusing on what we've got. So it looks like Goalie and Pinson are getting into it again. It didn't look like them talking to him at all did anything. As the referees are talking, This could get it. I think they called a technical. Oh, did they? So, I don't know if it's a double technical, which it should be, or if it is just one of the guys got in trouble. And I'm not sure, but their fans are clapping. So timeout is taken. We're gonna keep it here because we wanna see the excitement of what we could be watching here. I'm gonna go ahead and go through our team again. I wanna thank Merle Bertrand, our QA, kind of the big dog behind everything at Vibe Sports. Appreciate him being the QA tonight. I'm sure he's got better things that he could be doing, but he's taking time out of his day to be here for this playoff game. Carson Smith back from football. She's uh, come out of retirement. I think she knew her little sister Hudson was doing a pretty good job, wanted to show her up. And we have Carrie Smith who, used to be the producer and is now just the color commentary person and then myself scott smith doing play by play and yes there's a lot of smiths running around here and we're not related and we're not related she's not my sister even though i call carson my daughter she's really not my daughter um looks like mason is going to the line for technical fouls it'll be interesting to see though if it goes both ways if that's the case, then whoever had the next jump ball will get the ball, but I have a feeling it was just on the Lions. He'll make both free throws, and it was, it was just on uh, Ja Goley. So that's Goley's third foul, team four. They'll get the ball with a 47-32 lead. Massaquay going up against uh, Miguel, blows right by him. In the corner to my Wybrew. Wybrew pulls up, gets fouled by Stevenson. That is his fourth foul of the game. Oh, 
Five fouls on the Lions, two on the Wolves. Wybrew goes to the line. And he makes the first one. He now has five. In high school boys basketball though, you can't just score uh, 10 points and a half and expect to win. Six points now for Wybrew. 49-32, 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter here. Lions trying to move on to round number two, but they're gonna have to make up a lot of ground. They're back to a zone defense or a matchup zone defense. Goalie to Andrews, Roque from three, and Roque buries it. He now has 11. 49-35, Lions down 14. Massaquoi is gonna drive and they're gonna call a travel. Stevenson with a great job of stopping him going to the basket. And he did that with four fouls. And this is right now the way things stand. This could be his last game. He's going all out. You can expect everything out of Tyler. Roque on the wing. Dr drives, the ball's loose. Tay Andrews picks it up, lays it up, misses. Jackson gets the rebound, and here they go the other way. Mason with the ball on the left wing. Maybrew to Pinson. Pinson's gonna drive. That should have been a charge, possibly, nothing. Jackson gets the rebound, sticks it up, and scores. And now he's talking. 14 points for him. 51-35, 16-point game. Major News gonna check in at the next dead ball. Goalie. Good job by Tay Andrews to use his court awareness to know the ball was tipped by them. He just blocked the ball and let it go out of bounds and we'll get it back. Fifty-one thirty-five, five oh six to go, fourth quarter. Andrews with on the left wing over to goalie to Miguel. Out to goalie. Miguel's got to start looking for a shot. They get it in the major. Major shoots and scores. And like I've been saying for the last three years, you got to go inside when you got the height. 51 to 37. Baskets almost at will when we go inside. They'll kick it out. Massaquay over to Pinson. In the baseline to Jackson, and he steps in and scores. He now has 16. 53-37, 4.20 to go. Goalie goes the other way and scores. He now has 17. 53-39, 4.10 to go in the fourth quarter. They'll hand it off to Masakoy. I would think at this point in time, they're gonna start running some clock, you would think anyways. They shoot a real quick jumper, it's no good, but nobody blocks out and he gets an easy layup. As Wybrew was right there, he now has eight. Nobody blocking out on that series. And with 3.55 to go in the ball game, it's 55-39. We're gonna take a real quick break. You're watching or listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Central Texas Refuse LLC is a highly respected full service waste collection and recycling company serving Central Texas and the surrounding areas. CTR has proudly been servicing the cities of Round Rock, Cedar Park and Lockhart for decades. CTR is one of the largest independent waste collection service companies in Central Texas. Founded in 1981, CTR has grown through organic expansion and currently operates from four primary locations in Southeast Austin, Round Rock, Lockhart, and from Wilco, a comprehensive single stream recycling facility in Williamson County. CTR is honored to be a sponsor of Lockhart High School Boys and Girls Sports. Go Lions! All right, we're back here for the last three minutes and 50 seconds left. Lions are down 16. Miguel from three, way off the mark. And it's Mason with the rebound. So 340 to go. The Wolves have the ball in the lead with a 16 point lead. This was a tight game in the first half and all of a sudden the speed is picked up. They're gonna call a foul on Tay Andrews. That's gonna be his third, team sixth. 
But the first half, 22-22, both teams going back and forth, but it was a really slow-paced game. And the Wolves have turned up the heat and the pace. And the Lions just, they needed to slow it down. That needed to slow it down. Now mm. they're kind of in a, having to pick it up to just catch up. I think they're just feeling frazzled now. Yep. Mason drives the line, shoots, misses, and they're going to call foul on Miguel. Oh, my goodness. Or no, they didn't. They called it actual on Major New, I believe. Nope, it was Miguel. So that's the third foul on Miguel, team seventh. They're in one-on-one -on -one rest of the way from here on out. The one guy we don't want to foul is at the free throw line. And he makes it. He is now five for five from the free throw line to go with his 20 points he has scored. Most of those are off three-pointers. He makes them both. 57-39, an 18-point lead for the Wolves. Goalie picks it up at half court. I'm really surprised they let him do that. Goalie misses the shot, and he put it up right-handed, but they're gonna call a foul. Let's see, the foul was on Massacoy. That's his fourth. Team third. Goalie goes to the line to shoot. 17 points, make it 18. At the end of the game, we'll have your offensive and defensive players of the game. New checks out. Garcia has checked in. Silvestre is getting ready to check in. And he makes both free throws. He now has 19 points. Chuck Nash is the offensive player of the game sponsor, and Johnny and Sons, your defensive player of the game sponsor. Full court pressure by the Lions. They get it up to Massaquai. He throws it in the corner to, Mab or to Jackson. Massaquai drives the lane, gets fouled, but who was it on? I think they're going to call it on Gio, huh? And it is Gio. That is his second. Team eighth. And Massacoy will go to the line where he has five points tonight. Miguel and Tay are about ready to check back in here. And he misses the free throw. So he is now one for five at the line. This may be the guy to foul from here on out if we need to foul somebody. I'd almost foul the big boy, the 30, number 35, just a sophomore because putting him in that pressure. He gets the every bit of the rim to get that one in. He now has six points. 58-41, 17 point lead, 250 to go. Garcia kicks it over to Andrews, who turns it over. Here comes Mason. Mason's going to bring it out to run some clock. Pinson's going to drive now, and now he'll bring it out for some clock time. Now we're getting to the point where we may have to start doing some fouling, and Tyler can't be one of them fouling. That's the guy you want to foul. I'm thinking that's why they took Jaw out. And they're going to call a foul on Gio Roque. Jackson has literally been crawling all over the backs of the defender of our players, and they call the foul on Gio Roque. That's his third. Team ninth. Nine to three in fouls. Not that that's been the difference in the game, but it sure isn't helping things at all. Jackson will go to the line to shoot two. He has 16 points. He's two for three from the line. And he makes that one. He makes them both. 60 to 41, 19 point lead. Garcia with it. We gotta start hitting it inside and going to basket. Andrews to Garcia. 
Garcia loses the ball and here they come. Mason with it now. Under two minutes to go. Just running some time. Miguel's going to get called for the foul. That is his fourth. Team 10th are shooting two free throws the rest of the way. Ja Gulley will be checking back in at the next chance. And Dyke will go to the line to shoot free throws. And if you look at my scores card, the fourth quarter is all free throws. And he hits the first one. That's his first point of the game. Stevenson will get the rebound off the second one with a miss. Minute 45 to go, 20 point lead. It had taken them 20 years to get to the playoffs and they got there this year, but it looks like we're gonna be falling a little bit short to get to the second round. Go, or Roque from three, no good. Wybrew with the rebound, kicks it out to Pinson. And a good job inside as the Lions fighting for it. Can't, comes back out to Pinson into Wybrew, tries to dunk it and Stevenson blocks him. He was going for the dunk and Stevenson says no. Goalie at the other end gets the basket and they're gonna call a foul. And that's gonna be on Massaquay, I believe. Yeah. Nope, that's Dyke. So goalie will, hmm. Gio Roque is gonna check out. He's gonna give the seniors a, their last curtain call. Roque and Stevenson will check out of the game. The end of the game is going to be uh, Dickens and New. Goalie scores it. Gets the old fashioned three point play. 61-44, one minute to go in the ball game. Pinson gets around. Massaquoi, Mason. 50 seconds left. Massaquoi drives, kicks it in, but he walked. 48 seconds left. Bronson Alvarez will check in. Major New will check out. Also on the floor is Sean Schexnader. Forty-five seconds left. Goalie from way downtown misses. It was Maybrew with the rebound. Pinson's just going to walk it up the court. So the Lions will uh, drop to eleven and eleven overall this year, but they did make the playoffs for the first time in twenty years. And they're going to call a foul on Jaw Goalie. That's his fourth. Maybe his fifth, the way he's acting. Nope, it's his fourth. Mason is at the line. And he makes the first one. And he misses that one. Cars, uh, Garcia was looking for the pass for Anders, threw it away as Maybrew back came up with it. 62-44, 17 seconds left. Shelton will throw it in. Garcia. They're just kicking it around, ball stolen. And Massaquoi will run the clock down. And that'll do it. 62 to 44 is the final score here in the boys contest. We're gonna take some commercials. And when we come back, we'll have your offensive and defensive players of the game. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network fueled by Vibe Live. 
The Pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. All right, we are back here at Weiss High School where the final score is 62 to 44 in favor of the Weiss Wolves. I want to go through the Weiss, Weiss scoring real quick. Uh, Pinson, or I'm sorry, Massacoy had six, Pinson seven, Dyke one, Mason 22, Wybrew eight, Jackson 18, and that's their 62 points. On the other side of the coin, it was uh, Ja Goley with 22, Jordan Garcia with two, Major New with eight, Gio Roque 11, Tyler Stevenson with one, and that's the scoring for the 44. It was 22-22 at half, the boys scored 22 points in the second half for an even 44, but it was uh, the speed of the game in the second half that changed pace, and that's what the difference was, was uh, the speed of the game, as they were actually able to get things going and kind of ran away from us a little bit. So going through the uh, players of the game real quick, defensively we'll start out with the Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game. First of all, you gotta, you gotta give Tay Andrews Jr. one of the defensive players of the game. He just all over there to guards. He just played a great game defensively, had some big steals, covered some big players, and, and did a great job. Also a junior defensive player of the game is post player at 6'9", Major New, as he got a lot of rebounds, played super defense, had a bunch of assists tonight, and he also dropped in eight points to go with uh, those, uh, those honors. Tyler Stevenson, big country, also defensive player of the game. A block shot on an attempted dunk, and he said, not in my house. It was a great play to end on. <laughs> it was. Absolutely. It was. It was fantastic. But that's Tyler Stevenson, one of the best defensive players in the district, and uh, did a phenomenal job. He only had one point in his last game as a, a senior, but what he did on the defensive end was huge. So Tay Andrews, Jr., Major New, Jr., and Tyler Stevenson, Sr., those are your Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game. On the other side, early on, it was Gio Roque, the senior. Got elbowed in the nose, and I was like, oh, that's the wrong thing to do. And, and that's exactly what happened. He came out, and he started firing from that point on. Ended up with 11 points tonight. Hit a big three-pointer in the fourth quarter. So Gio Roque, senior, will be one of your uh, Chuck Nash's offensive players of the game. And then the man who's pretty much ran the show all year for the team. He's been the backbone, the, the leading scorer, and the true leader as a point guard. Uh, junior Ja Goley dropped 22 points tonight. He and Gio will be your Chuck, and Chuck Nash offensive players of the game. Great season for the Lions, 11-11 overall. They took third in district play. Um, did a fantastic job and, and uh, you know, went up against a really tough number two seed from the 18 District 18 and uh, just kind of, wheels kind of fell off in the second half. But um, great season for them. Coach got them to the playoffs for the first time in 20 years. They have a lot to be proud of and can build sure. from there. For sure. So Carrie, what was your thoughts on today? 
my thoughts, you know, they, they're leaving and feeling heartbroken, but they've come a long way. They did really well. Um, I, they had the fight in them. Uh, they just kind of lost that kind of at the end of the third quarter and just couldn't get going again. Um, I, I think it's I think it's a lesson in, in staying intact, right? I think next year our returners are going to are gonna have this under their belts. They're going to have some experience in this. They're going to know it's just a little different vibe than, you know, your typical even – in district, your rivalries, they, it just feels different. There's a, a different air about it. So they're going to have this under their belts. Maybe next year they'll come back and be able to stay a little more composed. I think we just kind of got nervous and let it go just a little bit too far. Um, but uh, definitely nothing to be heartbroken about. They're amazing kids. Uh, it's sad to see some of the seniors go. It's sad when you see big boys cry. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it, it kind of gets you. So, But the, I, I think they did an awesome job. Well, you know, it's it's been a crazy year anyways. And when you put all that together with the fact that it used to just, you know, kind of be me and Brandon doing the football and Carson as our sidekick there producing. And then all the COVID and the shutting down of things and everything else kind of brought you into the picture so that you could get in, see your daughter play ball and things of that nature. And, hey, shh, don't tell her. And uh, we don't need to know. But, uh, but, no, we've literally gone through the Smith clan here. We had Carson start out with football. Then Carrie jumped in to do part of the basketball. And then Hudson decided, hey, I want to give that a shot. And she did a really good job, except for the one time she blew her eardrums out on the commercial. <laughs> Other than that, she did a great <laughs> job. Uh, and then, you know, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun, and it was a great basketball season. Both teams have junior classes that are going to be very, very solid. Definitely. And uh, I think both teams will be fighting for the playoffs again, boys and girls. Uh, that'll pretty much do it for us, but I do want to give our shout outs to our team one more time. So Merle Bertrand, appreciate you being the QA. I mean, this is one of the big dogs of Vipe live. And he was gracious enough to be the QA for today's playoff game. As always, Carson Smith, uh, doing the production, Carrie Smith color commentating, Hudson Smith being the bodyguard tonight, and uh, myself, Scott Smith, doing the play-by-play. -play. We appreciate you listening in today. Lions fall a little bit short again, the final score, 62-44, to 44, but they did make the playoffs for the first time in 20 years. Hats off to all of them. Uh, Going to miss the seniors. Been a good run, and we will talk to you soon. So, uh... <laughs> you all have a great night and thank you for listening. Good night.